What's up guys? So this week I'm um, going to continue off of the crash course. Now, if you follow the crash course, you, you know, the, the basis of how to code in Fortran, but there are extra keywords that can make your life easier. Also kind of cover the differences between modern Fortran and Fortran 77 and some of the older standards, and then also look into how to make a make file. So if that all sounds cool to you, please give this video a like and subscribe. Now, I didn't mention this in the last video, but I'm actually using the Windows Linux subsystem, and that's how I'm compiling and running all my Fortran code. There are other ways you can install Fortran on a Windows system. If you're using Windows, Mac can install it through Homebrew. Linux systems can install it through their own package managers. So one is you can see here, I have this integer parameter. Now parameter is how Fortran does constant. So if you define it here, this is global to the entire module. And then parameter just ensures that it cannot be changed. So I'm defining pi as 3.14. Now with the parameter, another thing to keep note of is, so you, you can see I have my, my pi as capital PI is equal to 3.14. Now it's more just standard to define constants as capital letters, but Fortran actually doesn't tell the difference. So if I put PI capital letters or PI lowercase letters, it wouldn't know the difference and it would render both of those as 3.14. The 77 standard, and I believe the older ones, you see a lot of the code is actually like all capital letters. Okay, now I'm just gonna go into some keywords that I think are helpful to know if you're trying to do some more design to your functions. One is sometimes we don't always want our variable named after the function. If you know what you wanna call it, you can type results and whatever. So in this case, I have result y, and now it would expect me to define some sort of y variable. Let's say it was just an int, I'll put it here. Now this y is what the function is going to return. Now if you do want it named after the function, then you just don't include that and it will just default to the function name. Extra keywords that you may see in Fortran code is pure. Pure in front of a function means that it doesn't alter anything outside of the function. So you're inserting data, you're inserting variables inside of there. Everything within that function is self-contained. It's not causing, causing any outside alterations. It's very good for parallelization because sometimes you're altering an array and you want to make sure it's doing this exact one task and it's not changing anything different. So that's something for, for that. Another keyword is elementable which is similar to vectorizing a function. It means it could take an array and it will do a vectorized operation on it. Another thing you may see is a data type definition up here. And you may see something like this, or it could be a real, it could be an int, it could be a complex, whatever it's supposed to return. I know that the syntax has changed, but that's mainly because of my editor. That's just another definition header where that is saying, now this function returns that data type. If you're looking at older code, they don't really use this real 64 in 64 because that was something from this library that came later on. And sometimes you just see numbers here. So you just, you may just see an eight. Sometimes you can see multiplied by eight. Sometimes you see double precise. Sometimes you just see real. It can be all these different variations. Another facet of older code is commenting. You comment right from the start. If you put a C here, this is now a comment. So C, C is comment. But if you start the C out here, it's no longer a comment. So it has to start at the very beginning of the line. And another thing that you may see is block titles. So this, this do block, let's say we called it one, and that would be the title of this block. Now, rather than an end do, it would have a one continue. And this would just keep on going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So what this one is saying is you're titling the block as that value. And this continue statement is actually the end of the do block. So it's going to get to this continue. It realizes this is linked with one. This is one. So it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's actually how they would do the, the do blocks. And you'd also see that with if blocks and, and other types of control flow. Okay. Now, two more that I can think of is external. This is if you're calling subroutines that are outside of your function or your module. So if you're importing a library, let's say the linear algebra pack or uh, the BLS, BLAS pack or something like that, then those are external functions or external subroutines. 
and you would put external and then put the names of the subroutines here and then you would call them. Now you saw before when I called my subroutine A, I actually didn't use external as because it was defined within the same module, so it was fine. Another keyword is dimension, and that's just another way that you may see people define arrays. If I do this, is this is the same exact thing as what you saw above, where I had CR of 5, 5. In this case, this dimension now applies to every variable in this line, so I could put ER, ER, and so on and so forth. And all of these would be 5 by 5 arrays. Okay, and here is our make file. Now first I have the compiler here. This is the compiler that we're using. In this case it's gfortran. Maybe some people are using ifort and you would put that there. For the compiler flags, I have a couple here. This is so I define the standard and it will use more modern flags to point out any mistakes that I'm making. This warning flag is just turning on all the warnings so I can see everything that may cause an issue. These are debugger flags where when I get an error statement, it may produce more errors or more of a backtrace just so I can see what's going on. And then this dash G flag is for the GDB debugger. So the source files is just everything you need compiled. Mod learn and main are the only two files that I have in this case. And main is the one that's actually calling mod learn. So you can see the, the order here matters. Mod learn first gets called and it's first gonna get compiled. So this is put here. And then main is what compiles off of mod learn, so it gets put after. Now these object files are the source files, but now appended with a .o. So when you're running the command to compile everything, it just knows that, okay, everything that was a source file just gets created as an object file, and it will just know to compile everything. This is my executable. This is me just echoing commands so that I can see that it's compiled together. And these are our compilation commands. Now this line is what turns all your source files to object files. You can see it says .f90.0, so it's going to change the f90 files to the .o based off of this command, which is the dash c flag from before. And then this line here is what actually runs all the object files, creates the executable, does everything, and then it's going to output this all echo commands. This clean command is just so you can clean everything up, you can remove any extra files because as your project gets bigger and bigger, you can see you create an O file and a mod file for every module. So even if you have like three modules, it's gonna create six extra files every time you compile. So it's nice to clean up your repository. Now running all this, I would just type make. You can see model compiled, everything's good. And then I can just run dot main, there's my output. So if you have a good make file, it makes everything really nice makes it really easy because now if I just add more modules, I just append it to this source file line. If I need to add more flags, I just append it to these things. I don't need to change a ton of things or alter any other code. Okay, and that's what I have for you this week. Now, I don't do Fortran very often, and if you want me to continue doing Fortran code, please let me know in the comment section. I can go deeper into other aspects of Fortran. There's pointers, there's parallelism, tons of other things that I didn't get to covering because I just wanted to be a wider swath of just coding the basics of Fortran. If you like what I've been doing here, please give this video a like and subscribe. And I have IG and Twitter links in the description below. I'll be posting weekly announcements about the channel. If you have other topics that you want me to cover as well, please let me know in the comment section below or tweet at me at Twitter at DJ's Office Hours or email me at djsofficehours at gmail.com. Hope you learned something new, and I'll see you guys next week.